My name is Jack Rosen. I'm a volunteer here. I give workshops on the Casey Remedies and the Casey Philosophy, usually a couple of times a month. Today we are going to have a very special program. This is the first full workshop that uh, Jorge is going to do. Uh, Jorge is a shaman from Lima, Peru. Uh, and it's funny how people come into your lives and out of your lives. Uh, <coughs> through a friend, uh, my wife who has, uh, who has breast cancer, she recommended him to help treat her. It, we were talking in the car. It's very interesting how sometimes you get a calling. When he was 22, he was in the university. And he had a whole career set up, uh, going to college, he had a year left, and then he stopped. He left. Now this is Peru. Go back 25 years, third world country, had a whole future set up, jobs and everything. And he left to the chagrin of his mother and father, who pretty much cut him off. Went up into the mountains and started digging toilet bowl holes. You know, that's for about a couple of bucks a day and then got involved with energy healing using through Nikon. Uh, used to go to the not so good parts of Lima with uh, Chinese teachers. Worked in hospitals with uh, alternative medicine with the MDs where he's, he deals with all sorts of illnesses. And then uh, when he was dealing with some older patients a couple of them were shamans who slowly got him into the shamanic tradition and that's pretty much what he does now. He goes over the world, he has groups from all over the world, does, uh, works with them individually, does classes and uh, he's a healer and he's in the right place. You see this is a spiritual organization, Edgar Casey. At the end of the day this place is all about remembering why we're here, remembering why you chose to come into a body in the first place. You see, that's the problem. We all forgot why we came here. And when I talk to him, it's almost like a reminder, because that's the world that he lives in. He lives in that world. And then he comes out and he deals with us on, on, in our world. So, uh, in my mind, he's as good as it gets. Uh, he's going, to, I, when we talked, I don't know, he's not even sure what he's going to talk. It'll be an inspirational moment. Whatever comes out will be meant to be. But um, he's good. That's, all, that's the last thing I will say. And without any further ado, Jorge Hachumak, a shaman from Lima, Peru. Thank you, Jeff, for that very nice introduction. Um, you know, I don't have an, an, a specific um, structure of, of um, what to talk or what are the subjects. I wanted to keep it uh, very fresh and spontaneous as the healings are. When uh, you go and uh, you touch a person for the first time, you don't have uh, um, any idea of what the complex universe of that person is. You can have some ideas from uh, from what you have been picking, talking or sensing from the person, but when you go really to meet what is in the soul of the person, it's a whole different uh, real that you're going into. So in some way uh, today is like, a, I want to take this like a little communal healing experience and trying to sense during the minutes that are going to to pass all about everyone and, and hoping that the things that are going to come uh, to be said are going to really be important and opening for the different uh, ones of, of you now. And um, first of all I want to thank you a lot to invest your time and, and your opening to hear all about this. Um, I don't feel it, it, there is anything special or unique. Um, 
we all, everyone, have incredible, important gifts that are beyond our capacities, our intellectual abilities, our education, our training. Um, in some way, um, um, one of the things that we are meant to be in this existence is to contribute with the beauty of this creation with our gifts and w with our own capacities of, of making this a nice, beautiful, healthy place. And we all have different kinds of gifts. Gifts about communication, gifts about healing, gifts about understanding, gifts about uh, keeping knowledge and keeping uh, important things, and uh, gifts about art, art and uh, leadership, but whatever. There are, I think, so many different gifts as different people or flowers are on earth. The thing is that sometimes we live, we pass through life without never, never, ever touching our gifts and knowing what they are and having probably the strength or the intelligence to apply them. And that's because um, part of the rules of this game, of this kind of existence, is that we have to exert our choice every day, every minute, and that's the only door that is going to open all these possibilities for us. So in some way, um, a healthy person is a person who is able to apply his freedom of choice from his deep consciousness, his, this high consciousness that is not affected by fear, is not affected by greed, is not affected by pain. And I'm going, I'm going to try to develop all this vision of, of what, a, what health is and, and how to get it from my experience. More than a teaching, um, I, I only um, understand this uh, sharing moment as, as the sharing of an experience. I have experienced some things I have taken important choices in my life. The understanding is coming every day, new understanding about a lot of new things all the time. It's endless. And what I'm doing today is sharing with you the understanding that I have up to this moment. And uh, some of that, probably 1%, 10%, 5% is going to touch to the different level of understanding that you all have. And it might just confirm or open new possibilities. The way I have learned uh, many of these abilities have been through the exchange of gifts, the exchange of understanding, and exchange of, of, of uh, spiritual understanding and about energetic uh, capacities. It's like when you meet someone, when you meet a shaman, uh, let's say a traditional ethnic cha shaman, and uh, you are really open with your heart and there is a recognition that you are able to help people and to do things in the, in the <coughs> sense of, of, of the natural health. Then there is a joy coming, a natural joy that, that comes from this uh, meeting. And then the way of honoring that meeting is exchanging gifts. Nobody is going to give you 100% of what it has, but he's going to just sense and put for you something that he knows that is good for you. And in return, as a natural flow of feelings, you are going to put also on the table something for that person. And that's how nature exchanges energy and, and the force of life. It's something very simple and very, very uh, natural, if you want. Then, through the years, more tools have been added. The experience opens for you a more... Uh, uh, synthesis view of, of things and then also everyday work and everyday challenge makes you more sharp and you are able to channelize more uh, strong tools to work and that's what makes proficiency through experience and through time and the fact of keeping in the choices
archaeology or history cannot go so far away in time except for finding some stones <coughs> and some skulls. But we have to understand that we have been sharing together the awakening of our consciousness in the middle of, of, of this creation, of this nature. And we have been all in the world sharing the same fear, the same necessity of survival, the same need of discovering what plants, were f what food was, were, what were the properties of the different elements around us. And it has been a very, very slow awakening through thousands of years. And, and I say it again, really, really beyond all what is nowadays known cultures, differences, different mythologies, religions. We were really fearing all of us the same. Fear from the unknown. We were feeling the renewal of life every day with the dawn, with the sunlight coming and hitting us again. And the unknown of the night with all these spirits coming out and, and, um, and the darkness and the cold. So that has shaped in our mind a way of seeing and has put in ourselves very, very deep primal structures about fear and of course the values that come from the most va basic survival. And when I see myself in the visions and when I have been receiving knowledge, I see myself in those very, very old times when we were having some feathers and some uh, furs and, and the artifacts were just stones and pieces of wood and pieces of bone and I'm talking only about my own experience but what I feel it's very valuable from that is like it allows me to go uh, beyond all the different cultural and ethnic differences it's like I don't feel that I uh, belong to a particular community or a particular ethnic or a particular religion of, 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 of the world or, or the ancient Peru or whatever. It's really beyond that and that's why I believe I'm able to work with different people and go to the very deep structure where normally things are installed and where normally illness and pain are installed. So um, I will uh, start this uh, sharing with you one important vision that I had like four years ago and uh, explain me a lot about uh, the way we have uh, understanding what humans are and, and you are going to see that it's in the basic in the basis of many religious thoughts in that vision we were a group of people and we were really awakening the understanding of the world we were very primitive and we were asking ourselves what a human being is. How, with this intelligence that start to make more elaborate thoughts, what are we, how can we understand what we are? And the only things we had for that was to sense ourselves and to check others and to check corpses that, from died people, from dead people. And uh, if you can follow uh, this vision, try to forget all what you know about medicine, about anatomy, about how the work works, how the, how the body works in terms of, of, of science. And let's put ourselves in the most primitive, childish understanding. So we were seeing opening a corpse, a human that has been dying from an illness or, or, or attacked by an animal or whatever, if you start to check bodies with this innocent understanding, you will see that basically outside the, the limbs we have three parts in our body. We have a big bag in the belly. And if you open a body, you are going to fill this bag. And in this bag you have the intestines, you have the liver, you have the stomach, you have the kidneys and everything. Then you have a cage. And you open, you see the cage, and inside the cage you have the lungs, and you have this special organ that just is moving by itself, even sometimes after the person has closed his, his, his eyes. 
and then you have a box and then if you compare that basic vision to what is happening inside you in these three parts then you feel that in this bag that we carry these strange organs first we feel hunger and we need to feed this primal need and we have to feel this and, 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 and we have to to, to get this uh, need of getting food uh, related to survival because if not we are dying so this is so important and also babies are carrying here in this bag in the belly and also when we fear fe when we feel fear we feel it here and sometimes we, when we are terrorized we pee and we shake everything is so related and we have all these movements in the belly and also we feel in the in the spring the <coughs> sexual pulsion so strong and everything is happening around this part so this part is really related with the renewal of life and again we are in this very basic very old primitive understanding of the world but you are going to see how it, that's behind a lot of further in time uh, constructions and beliefs so we have this bag that is related to life and we have to keep us alive just taking care of all what is it is here reproduction and food and of course elimination too then we have the cage so we touch ourselves and we say what is inside our cage and then we have particular feelings around this and then we have the breathing and then we have another part of life that is taken by this and then we touch ourselves and we have this beating this rhythm inside us from the heart but it's all the time there and we feel joy and we feel courage and we feel a lot of emotions and <coughs> sadness just coming from this from this side and then we have the box and we realize that the way we are acknowledging things around us are through these little holes that we have in this cage, in this ball of bone. We are hearing, we are seeing, we are smelling, we are taking things in. And everything has been put in this part of our body. We don't have the mouth of the ears. So this is so important and it has to, to do with understanding with sensing and with choosing and with with choice and decision so this gives us the immediate three how do you say three part height, three side three part nature yeah so you say yeah, can yeah, you say yeah. like that mm -hmm. okay so we have the box we have the cage and we have the bag. Three different parts that even from the side on a primitive mind are so di dis dis distinct. distinct. Right. So, as people in the past didn't use the rational mind, everything was understood and transmitted through symbols. And poetry was the language to, to express things. So we have been choosing symbols to talk about the nature of about this, because the language was not so developed in terms of concepts. And we have choosing uh, we have been choosing animals to express these different parts. So the animal that is related with the force of life is the snake. But it's not any snake. And if you talk with someone from the Amazon jungle, the way they see the boas is a complete different animal from a viper. Mm -hmm. The viper they c carries the poison and normally means treason, danger, evil, danger. But the boas, they are different. They are related to water. They, sh they move like water and they are not uh, harmful for men. <coughs> they can become so big that they are feel like the mother of a place. Mm -hmm. 
like of a swamp of a lagoon and this kind of, of, of a snake has been related as a symbol of the force of life so we have this big snake living here <laughs> and it symbolizes life we, we shouldn't be uh, uh, affected by other ways of thinking when we have been relating all the evilness to the snakes and ha that has been causing so much harm and, and cruelty and, and ignorance uh, uh, and, and pain from ignorance when people have been applying uh, a bad understanding when primitive cultures have been you are never taking the snake as a god it's just the symbol of life and every time that you see it, it reminds you about the force of life. And in other parts of the world, the equivalent is the python. Python? Python? Python. Python. Which is of the same, if you want, family of the boas, and it's not uh, a harmful, poisonous snake. And I, get, I say that because I guess it was the same for the Egyptians, for the Greeks, and people from Asia. So this snake is the symbol of life, and we carry it here. And why also the snake? Because when you learn how to move energy, it really feels that something starts to be, you say, un unwind, unwind, and dressed li like a snake. Then if we go to the chest, the symbol that has been taken is the big cat. So we are having this this big cat here. Somewhere like this. And why the cat? Because especially you feel courage and the impulse, the force of will is here. And you really feel that something comes out. This way of saying the lion heart is not by mistake. It really comes from a feeling of something that is inside. And you feel that this heat, you know, puts on, 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 on your chest when you are deciding and you are acting. And um, it has been related to the, to the heart. And also because big cats are not seen as regular animals. They uh, belong to a, like a special different kind of beings. Really like, uh, if you want, I will not say like, uh, it's not mythical, it's, it's like, they don't belong to the same level of the rest of the animals. They carry a special, a special um, intelligence and understanding of the world. And they are seen really like magical animals. And when we see them, they remind us to connect with this very strong wisdom and this power of, of, of choice that we carry. And then for the big uh, uh, box, for the skull, because this is related to understanding and, and the power of decision, the strength, the quality of the decisions, it has been related to the birds, to the big birds, whatever, whatever they are in different parts of the world. And even in, into Peru, you have a different kind of birds in the jungle, it's going to be like an eagle. In the mountains, high mountain is going to be a condor. And all over the world it's always a big bird. Why? Because the bird is able to go so up that he sees things on a different scale that when humans are on the top of a mountain and you are out of the little miseries of everyday life and you can see things really on a big scale and project out your understanding to really, really long term. It's also the, the, the eye of the hawk, the eye of the eagle that when, when you see it, it makes us feel the power of the decision, the clarity of the view, and the clarity of the choice that is taken by this intelligence. But when I was learning, the word that was taken was Nikon. And uh, ne means internal, uh, internal abilities is the translation of Nikon. And uh, it includes not only the energy but also the understanding of, of uh, human nature, 
the, the emotions, the spiritual things and things beyond understanding, like visions and, 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 and intuition and other things. If you are developing the energy, also your capacity for the subtle world also develops. And uh, when we were working, we were talking about the three tantiens that one is placed here beyond the, the how do you call this? Navel. Navel. Yeah. And um, the other one is placed in the in the heart in the middle here, and the other one is here in the middle of the, of the two eyebrows. And uh, you are sensed to develop and to open and to connect them so the energy flow liberates and you become more healthy and also you are able to move and, and, and handle your energy in a special way. And it's very curious because they are so related. And now we talk about this in terms of with special names and with channels and connections. But in this primitive way and everywhere in the planet when people are living uh, close to nature and uh, close to the elements and having a healthy life their their energy level is very strong and they have this vision very clear in mind what is interesting also i found is that these three circles and we are soon going to, to take talk about the axe <coughs> The way these circles are connected with these transition levels between these different like zones, realms, and with the top, it makes the seven, which I believe is my belief, I cannot just affirm it because I have never studied uh, uh, the Indian tradition, but they should be related to the seven centers of the seven chakras, mm -hmm. because they are like the hinge in between the three levels. So when I, wh what I have been learning with, with uh, my Chinese teachers and what I have been, when I have been adding the shamanic understanding, what I teach in terms of energy and how to move, it's related to you work with these three centers and you develop them. And these ones, they come by itself. They are just required to come along when you are developing the other ones. In this uh, training about about these three centers, it's not exactly as as, as talking uh, about uh, the chi or the vital energy like electricity. It's not like if you breathe some amount of times like this, and then if you focus your mind on this point, and if you make this uh, uh, x number repetition or something. It's not like that. For starting to move the energy, you have to connect with this origin of life here. In fact, it's where the embryo, your embryo, was related to your mother's embryo. It's like, like you know, you have the embryo and you are related from your center of life to the center of life of, the, of your mother. And again, it's about the origin of life. So when you start to train about, about awakening the energy in the belly, you take a, a, a particular position, but then you don't try to think about the energy. You try to connect with the sensation of belonging to your or, or origin, you know? It's like remembering this sensation of center, of being fully protected, and that we have, that we belong to this part where we have been developed, we have been raising from this. This is difficult for me to put it on words, but this combination about the sensation of finding the point where we belong and the fact that that's our center and we are protected and all this together, when you have this sensation in you and you start to apply the proper techniques about energy, then, then it comes awake so, so easily. And uh, I have been teaching practical things about this in different parts of the world, and I have had people that are very um, <coughs> uh, into 
into different kinds of Qigong and Chinese work and uh, I have a, got very good feedback in terms of that this particular component about, component about what to feel <laughs> when you are doing the exercises have been the clue point for many people for being able to get because sometimes we are told by books or by videos or by people to we are asked to believe that if we do this exercise or if we do this after some time we are going to get a sensation but uh, in fact when you are touching something true inside you it doesn't take too long it doesn't have to take too long you are just touching that and then you start to feel something starts to move and then you learn how to handle that and I guess a very important um, ingredient is to see things with this component that um, it doesn't belong particularly to shamanism. The way I learned the Qigong, the Maikong, was also with these elements. But later, after the years, I have been putting on that the, the, the understanding of, of uh, from if you want the shamanic way of, of seeing things. I don't like too much the, the, the word uh, shaman or shamanic. First, because it's a word that uh, it comes from Russia and it has been taken as a world standard to talk about natural medicine men. Um, the old American words for that, they don't say shaman. If you translate them, they mean people that carry medicine, people, me medicine man, medicine woman people who can heal and the translation the natural translation is someone that has some kind of understanding or something that can help to heal people and what we heal is not the body of course because the body is a consequence of our inner soul uh, uh, say status status Stat yeah you understand it like yes. that yeah and it's very funny because many times when someone comes with a particular physical illness, they, uh, if you really hear what they say, it's like they want to be um, arranged and fixed to continue doing what they do all the time. <laughs> you understand what I mean? Uh, yeah. So in some ways, like a person is driving like a crazy taking risk and, and damaging his car and he goes to a shop and say okay fix my car and I will continue driving the same way so <coughs> if I fix the car and just the car then I'm not contributing to follow and protect uh, and to protect the, the, the balance of this creation which is really the purpose of, of, of a shaman if we, if we choose to use this word today. For me the definition of a medicine man is someone that is helping to protect the balance of nature. And that brings a lot of practical different uh, things to do. One of them is to work against suffering. The other one is to work for understanding, for helping people to understand. And another one is to try to keep the spiritual component or the sacred component in everyday life. We are um, in, in, in the let's say modern world we are living in two different societies that <coughs> societies that have every day less in, 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 uh, as, as, as a different and we are going to have most of, 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 of our societies the same rules about the way of seeing life and those rules if we look at really with very honest eyes from, from the natural vision we see very, very uh, um, 
ill ways of seeing life. And I will give you some, some of, of, of the ideas I have. One of them is that we are living in a society of fear, where everything is taken and all the choices are, are made <coughs> for, for avoiding possible risks <coughs> and possible pains and possible damages. So we are very, very away from what I would say the law of the jungle, in terms that things are so different all the time. And we live in some in a world where everything, every present moment is changing, is evolving. And we have to be in the present time for choosing all the time, for choosing wisely and with in intelligence. And instead of being in the present time, we are told to go on this direction, on to another direction, and to hold ourselves to avoid risks, <coughs> even if through the risk we are going to get the important things that we need. So that is really against the law of the jungle, when every day you have to go out to get food, and you have to be creative, and to, you have to be adap adaptative, and you have to take your courage and your abilities to survive. So now we are told that not to use that those capacity, just to stay more or less like asleep or lazy for those things. And everything should get to our door if we pay for it. And that for me, it's producing a lot of illness, mm -hmm. according to a shamanic point way of, of seeing life. It's producing the illness of becoming more fragile emotionally. It's producing the illness of, of not being able to distinguish what is harmful for ourselves and for, for others, because we just follow. It's putting us passive and making us become like followers and, and, and uh, is putting our creativity and our one part of our intelligence to solve problems away. And uh, we, if at the same time we see that uh, a lot of our culture also denies the spiritual and denies the subtle world, then we are told to be ignorant and to just go put our understanding into a small frame and to stay away from all what the whole world is telling us. We are away from the messages that everyone has every day, all the time. We all get so many messages because the force of life, this snake that is carrying the force of life, want, wants all of us all the time to be healthy, to be strong, to be happy, to be with an open heart with a big comprehension, big understanding of the world, so we can contribute with our gifts again. And we are putting all this down to some kind of protective comfort. I remember when I was working with people and touching people in the sessions, I was always having more or less the same structure of image that I was having. I was seeing the person <coughs> I put the person like this and sometimes it was most of the time the person was walking or was moving and here it was a swamp that was not allowing the person to move freely. It was difficult. And over the person it was like a cloud, a dark cloud, but they all, these clouds, they look like bells, like covers, like domes, sometimes of different levels. And inside the person, in these different three centers of, 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 of the three parts of human nature, I was seeing these forms. and sometimes things around, okay? But let's say that I'm going to, to talk about like a, a hard case. It was not all the time everything together. And it took me a while and a lot of 
work and understanding from the vision and, and, and the work with the plants to understand <coughs> what all these parts were uh, uh, signifying. Because all this was not allowing the person to be smiley, shiny, and, 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 and in good shape and in good health. So, first, I will talk about this. If you see these centers on the same line, and you see it from above, you are going to see the center is going to be like a circle. And I will take the circle, which is, if you want, the most balanced, perfect figure, shape, to talk about the soul, to talk about <coughs> everyone's soul. This is the soul, and the soul carries a consciousness from it, which I will call the higher consciousness. And in shamanism, we call it, Peruvian shamanism, we call it the king or the queen, if you are a man or a woman. And it means that this queen or king, your highly consciousness, knows what is good for you, and is aware of everything, and really knows what the good choices are for you, and the good choices in terms also about compassion and about being well related with the people around you and with the whole creation. And then, because this soul is so free and it's beyond life and death, when you are alive, as a, well, if you want incarnated as a person, it has a membrane, which I understand it as what is called the ego. And if you want, the soul is like the balloon, and uh, it's like the gas in the balloon, and the ego is the balloon. It allows us to express and to interact with others. And it's following the shape, if you want, it's at the service of the soul. <coughs> and ego is not bad by itself. I believe it's a misunderstanding when a lot of people say, oh, that's an ego thing. Oh, your ego is bad, you have to destroy the ego and everything like that because <coughs> we have not came to this life, to this existence by accident. We have chosen to come. And we shouldn't be like, 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 a, like a child that is like, uh, um, if you want, not happy with, with its life and wants to go away. I believe there is like a perversion in the understanding of spirituality. When a lot of people, they feel the spir spiritual path is like, a, okay, we shouldn't escape from this reality of suffering. And we should go away because we are going to go to some kind of heaven or nice place where we are not going to suffer at all. But if that, should, if that was the purpose of our life, we shouldn't have came here. We are here to act and to choose especially the choice, which is the biggest, the most strong and wonderful human power. So we are here, and this ego is what allows us, it's like the skin that allows us to interact, it gives us individuality, personality, and has chosen to come on a particular time, on a particular place, under a particular family, under a particular race, particular nationality, by different reasons, and that's related to this. I'm going to talk about this after. But what happens? This ego is anyway bringing, in the way that you are wrapping <coughs> the soul, you are bringing experiences from previous lives. So it's not so perfectly round covering the soul. It has some old pains, old habits, is thicker here. And again, I'm talking about a vision I have, okay? It's just a metaphor of, 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 of a, a model of a truth. You can take it the way you want, the way it talks to you. So it's anyway carrying, carrying things, all memories and all things. So anyway, it has some charge, and it makes that more difficult to adapt with other things. But then, as soon as we are born, we are exposed to a lot of external things coming to us. And it's very interesting because 
the, pro the process of, of giving birth, of going out from the mother, <coughs> is like a pain seal that we all are sharing. Because first of all, from this very comfortable, warm place, we are exposed to a big light, to be forced to use our lungs, to this very strong traumatism of uncomfort. And then the fact of being, being in the necessity of call for our mother, call for food, and then be separated from the body of our mother and stay, it starts to, to, to put a lot of strong impressions in terms of pain, fear, and then all the experiences we start to, to, to get, there are like, if you want, hits on this ego that is trying to adapt with what is our outside, because that's its purpose as a, as a membrane or cover of the soul. So every time we have a hit, the ego, in, in its ignorance, tries to compensate. So if you have a hit here, is going to probably develop like a cover of here or is going to develop somewhere else and then through the years as we are children and we experience more things in life and we have deceptions and we are exposed to violence whatever personal story are after some time and when I see in the vision the egos what I see is the round of the soul and outside, whatever, it might be huge. And here, because we are not trained to get in touch with our soul, we have developed different nodules of consciousness. And again, this is without judgment. Everyone has the right of protect itself from pain. And many times we have been choosing ways of being, and we have structured our personality, defending ourselves, ourselves from pain. And that has been everyone's right. Nobody can judge you. But in the meantime, doing that, we have developed a particular pattern of personality, a particular way of reacting, according to the way our ego has been constructing its defenses from pain. Because he thinks, that part of our self thinks, that is better. That if you are hurt, if you take revenge, then you are going to feel released. And that's, that's really ego stuff. That's the mentality of, of, of the ego. That if you are greedy and you want to get more and more and more things, then it's going to call our lack of love, uh, this, this heat that you had sometime that something was taken away from you. So you develop like this black hole of greed. And that makes you feel calm for a while. So all that are these compensations from the ego. And I call this the ego of suffering, which is not the real balanced ego, which is needed and is on the service of the soul. And of course our soul, our soul is all the time awake. And the quality of the soul, yeah. So is that why people get sick? Because of that? Yeah, a big part. Mm -hmm. And we are going to get to that part. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And I call it ego of suffering because if, when we decide from here and not from here, most of the time we don't understand it, but we create more suffering for us and more suffering for others. It's always double. So what happens, let's say this person, this structure of personality is facing a new event. <coughs> And uh, it, it, the example is very good when you are facing a sudden new event, not something that is announced 
that start to produce a lot of possibilities and adaptation. Let's say, for example, that you are driving and then a car hits you and it's like an accident and then pff, you have like, like a strong shock. I don't know if you agree with this, but when we are facing a new event that takes us unprepared, in front of our eyes, if I can say it like that, there are several options that start to come about how to react. Mm -hmm. It's just like, it's less than a second. That, but this is one part that tells yourself that, okay, I should be, become angry, I should cry, I should uh, check, I, I should get immobile, I should wait. But you, we have choices. We are not really automats to, to react all the time. But what happens, because we are not in touch and we have not developed the muscle of our, of our higher consciousness, of the king and the queen, one of these options is going to take part and is going to conduct the actions of the person. Do you agree a little bit with this, that we have really options or whenever, or when someone tells us something new or, or we are facing something uncomfortable, then it's like, oh, I should do this or that, that. And normally, people, they take, is all these different consciousness, they are fighting for taking the, the command of the person. <coughs> and normally people, they will take any of this, they will let any of this. Why? Because this different consciousness from the suffering ego, they feel that they are feeding themselves when they have the opportunity of leading the actions of the person, of yourself. Every time you get angry about something and you allow the anger to take over your decision, that part of the anger inside you is feeding itself and is becoming stronger. And the next time is going to ask for more. Many of our, I will say, choices and the things that we like are conducted with this part of the suffering ego. There's a lot of people who like to see sad movies because that makes them cry and at the moment the pressure inside is relieved is relieved but this part this sad part of itself is feeding from that and becoming stronger inside people who have a lot of violence and they like violent sports and they go and they like to see the blood and they like to see the fight and the adrenaline about that because they have a lot of violence inside and that part at that moment, is feeding itself, <coughs> so it becomes stronger. Sometimes they become so strong, they are like parasite forms of life. And now I'm talking about shamanism. So when we go and you and, and you see inside, what you see is that the person has like monsters inside, and that what is what was called like take away the devils, take away the the, the those things. It's not the devil, the devil in terms of the Lord of Darkness. It's the part of the suffering ego that has been living inside us, and it's like taking our energy and living inside and trying to conduct our actions. So when you take it, and that's the shamanic work with the plants, at some moment it incorporates, because you have to pull it back to the surface to be able to release it. So the person is going to act like trapped on that. At that moment, you have that part of the person totally alive and conducting the, 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 the action and the shape of the person. At that moment, the person is that part that comes on the surface. The same way it is, and with people that have psychic, uh, psychic abilities, sometimes when you meet people, you give the hand to the person and you have several images coming to you of all the, all the parts that are living inside the person. Someone can look very nice and very in control, and you touch, you touch the person, you say hi to the person, and you can see, really, but see, the poor child beha behind all that armor of control. Or some, some person can come so nice and so uh, sympathetic, and behind <coughs> that you can see really like the monster of greed, you know, it, it's, it's so many things are behind that. And these different parts of the suffer, suffering ego, 
they create a disbalance and they take energy to be, to, 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 to live. That drains the balance and the energy from our physical body too. But it's not exclusively from the physical body. It's from the whole realm of the universe of the person. It touches all the levels. And the problems in the body are, I will say, 90% of the cases of the patients I have seen in 20 years. Consequence of this kind of disbalance to the years of life. 